quite fun being uni girl. Filming a Harry Potter movie might sound like a magical experience for a young actor, and it was, but it was also a huge challenge. After the huge success of the first film, the cast and crew came back for the Chamber of Secrets raring to go. But when it came to balancing schoolwork, tons of CGI, a cast of hundreds, and everything else, filming the second Harry Potter movie was no easy feat. We're taking a look at some of the most amazing behind-the-scenes moments from the Chamber of Secrets. You might think that the young actors and hard-working crew would have been given a break between filming the first Harry Potter film and the Chamber of Secrets, but nope. They started shooting the second movie only two days after the first premiered, and coming back to work was like getting a big family back together. After getting all of the introductions out of the way in the first movie, the second time around allowed them to not only make the Chamber of Secrets more funny, but also way darker and far more action-packed. The director, Chris Columbus, was so excited to be able to direct more of the action, and Daniel Radcliffe was definitely on board when it came to making the audience laugh. While they mostly stuck to the script, a few key lines from the Chamber of Secrets were actually improvised. First, the hilarious moment when Malfoy turns to Goyle, or Harry disguised as Goyle, and says, I didn't know you could read. was made up by Tom Felton because he forgot his line. And secondly, when Jason Isaacs says, Potter will always be around to save the day. He came up with it on the spot. Luckily, Daniel Radcliffe was right there with him as his response, Don't worry. I will be." was totally off the top of his head. According to Daniel, all of the flying car sequences took around a month to film, which meant that he and Rupert were trapped together in a tiny car for four weeks. Luckily, he thought Rupert was hilarious, and the two kept each other laughing, even after flying right into the Whomping Willow. Oh yeah, that was really fun. It's clear that they had a great time, because Dan said, Those were some of the best filming days, I think. And they had only just begun. Rupert and Daniel weren't the only ones who became fast friends, because it turns out that even though they might be rivals on screen, Dan and Tom Felton, who plays Malfoy, actually get along really well. But we're not really enemies, we love each other really. They had a lot of fun filming their Quidditch scenes, spending hours hanging from the ceiling in front of a giant blue screen, joking around between takes. After the huge success of the first movie, they were able to spend a little less time worrying and a lot more time having fun on the set of The Chamber of Secrets, even doing things that seemed like the complete opposite of a good time. For example, the scene where Ron has to throw up a bunch of giant slugs might be a nightmare to most of us. But for Rupert, it was a whole other story. They tasted quite nice, actually. They even let him choose the flavor. Three new big characters were introduced in the second movie. Lucius Malfoy, Gilderoy Lockhart, and of course, Dobby. But this movie was made before the days of motion capture and super realistic CGI. So acting opposite Dobby was actually a big challenge for Daniel Radcliffe. Challenging on the part of the visual effects team and challenging on the part of Dan Radcliffe. Dobby wouldn't be created until after the movie was filmed, so he spent the entire time acting opposite an orange ball. Nowadays, they might shoot the entirety of Hogwarts on a green screen, but back then they did almost all of it for real. One of the most complicated tasks was building Dumbledore's office, which took over 250 people to do for just that one room. Along with building the space, they had to commission a handful of different artists to paint all of the portraits and paintings that hang on his walls. Playing Quidditch might look like an amazing amount of fun, but it turns out it took quite a bit of getting used to. According to Daniel Radcliffe, in the first movie, it was actually really painful to spend so long up there sitting on a tiny broomstick suspended by wires. But luckily, by the time the Chamber of Secrets came around, they had figured out a way for it to be a lot less painful and way more fun. By rigging in more comfortable seats and footrests and using wires to keep their weight off of the broom. According to Chris Columbus, the main trio quickly went from actors with no experience to seasoned professionals from the first movie to the second. I've developed as a person so much everybody on set has. Everything got a little easier and started to flow more the second time around. And what once took 10 to 15 takes to nail down only took three or four on the Chamber of Secrets. Even though they may have been becoming best friends, that didn't mean that Daniel, Emma, and Rupert were free from teasing each other every now and again. In fact, they did it all the time. I'm so determined to embarrass me. 
Because they were all growing at different rates, they were all racing to keep up with one another, especially Emma, who was the only girl in the group. But don't worry, Rupert and Daniel didn't gang up on her, and she could totally hold her own. I am taller than you, or, or I will make myself taller than you. The young actors were really excited to see their characters grow and change from where they were in the first year at Hogwarts to the second. Daniel Radcliffe was intent on making Harry more grounded the second time around. In the first movie, he was more just reacting to things around him, and in the second, he really started to take charge of his world. Emma Watson said that Hermione definitely relaxed a bit for the second film. Hermione definitely becomes more sort of easygoing. Ron stepped into the Big Brother role, with Ginny now enrolled at Hogwarts. And also with his new owl, who, as Rupert Grint put it, is... He's really, really stupid and clumsy. One thing that everyone in the cast and crew could agree upon is that Chris Columbus was the absolute best director for the job. Not only was he a great leader, he also knew exactly how to talk to the young actors and get the best work out of them. He manages to get the whole set completely psyched up. While some directors sit in another room looking at the monitor and never speaking to the cast, Chris did exactly the opposite and was super hands-on the entire time. Having already been working together as a giant family for over a year on the Chamber of Secrets, the actors finally started to feel like they could step out of their comfort zones a little bit. One thing that the success of the first film enabled us to do was to sit back and be a little more relaxed. For Dan, he was so shy during the first movie that he would never offer his opinion about anything other than a funny prank or two. But when it came to the second one, he was a lot more comfortable and started sharing his ideas and thoughts with the director and really getting into the work. In the second, I kind of have a bit more confidence with putting ideas forward. According to Emma Watson, one of the biggest challenges of being a young actor on a giant Hollywood set is trying to fit everything in. Because while most kids their age would be in school full-time, all of the school-age Harry Potter actors had to be tutored on set during the day, while also filming the movie for up to 12 hours a day. They would run from the set to the tutoring trailer for a 15-minute lesson, back to hair and makeup, and on set again all day long. After all this, it seems like making the Chamber of Secrets was an amazing experience for everyone involved, and we're sure that none of the crew would trade it even for a second. We know that at 12, we would have so rather been making a magical movie than going to math class. How about you? Thanks for watching.